First Sergeant Kep here with Company D, Second United States Sharpshooters. And today we are in the craft room for a entry level leather working project. Today we are going to make a period correct style uh, axe sheath f for uh, my 1861-62 Benjamin Kelly main made axe. Um, it's really simple in, des in design. Um, it's kind of my personal preference. Um, I have sheaths for all my axes. Um, what really sets us apart as being uh, in the style of the 1860s is that we have a leather strap held in with a buckle um, and we use uh, copper rivets to secure our straps and everything's hand stitched. So um, I like this style. It's very secure. Um, people can be very particular about axes and they can also be very particular about their axe sheaths. Um, this is just the way I make them and I thought I would uh, share this project with you because um, not only is it uh, functional in the hobby, uh, but it is also functional for personal safety. Um, I keep my axes and all my tools really sharp and I also take a lot of pride in caring for my tools. So when you have sharp tools around camp, you should also have them protected at all times because a sheath like this not only protects the axe, but it also protects us. Um, I like this style a lot. Um, it's my personal preference, like I said, uh, but I also really like to make these really quick and easy snap uh, sheaths. Um, they're really easy to make. They take almost no time to build, uh, but these snaps um, aren't period correct. Um, I like to use these though uh, oftentimes because the easier it is to use protective equipment, the more likely people are to actually use it. Um, I also like these because it just sticks in my pocket really easily, but sadly it's not up to muster when it comes to historical accuracy. And that brings us to today's project. So first off, um, this isn't a military style axe sheath. Uh, the 1865 Quartermaster Manual does list some instructions on uh, making slings for uh, shovels and axes. They're, I think, pretty much exactly what Dell's Leather Works sells. And uh, the Quartermaster Manual does have instructions on how to, how to build that style. But uh, taking care of your camp tools is very important and very useful. So let's talk a little bit about the leather. Um, you're going to have a couple of choices. Uh, you'll want to get uh, probably veg tanned, um, but for the time period, they would be using oak tanned leather. Uh, oak tanned leather is accessible at any leather supply shop. It's just really expensive. Um, veg tan um, is a, pretty affordable, and you can even get uh, sometimes scraps that are like really cheap. Um, at leather supply stores that give you a little uh, lower barrier uh, entry into getting into this hobby of leather working. Um, the one thing you definitely want to stay away from is anything chrome tanned. Um, if you're looking for veg tan, you probably won't get them mixed up, especially if you ask, uh, ask someone to give you a hand at the store. Uh, but chrome tan leather and metal do not go together. Um, then the other thing comes down to weight. You don't want it too thin because it'll be flimsy and you don't want it too fat because it'll be overbuilt and difficult to tool and, and create. Um, so I like a nice medium weight leather, somewhere around a six to seven ounce, uh, I think works great for a project like this. Um, and then for hardware, um, I get my hardware from just Tandy uh, leather, uh, but there are a lot of uh, historical vendors online where you can get a, a more historical reproduction uh, of a buckle if you so choose. And then over the course of the video, we'll go over and introduce you to some tools. I'll show you how I use them. Um, but as we get started into this, this is, this is consider this a blank canvas. Um, this isn't very fancy. I don't go wild on finishing edges or anything like that. It's a utilitarian piece to, to keep a tool safe and to kind of show my respect for this um, beautiful piece of history. But you can definitely go um, all out as far as uh, tooling uh, the case and treating it. Um, sky's the limit. But this is a nice functional piece and I think it's a great way to get started into leather work. So let's get started. So before we get started, we need to make a pattern 
for our axe sheath. So you need to have your axe handy and uh, a piece of material uh, for making your pattern. Um, when I work with leather, uh, I especially like to work with something thicker, uh, like a cardstock. It's a little more durable. And then uh, we have a few sort of creative choices that we need to make. Uh, we need to figure out how far um, up the bit we want our sheath to go. Now, uh, a sheath really just needs to protect the, the bit. And so how far you back go back you go is entirely up to you. Um, I tend to go somewhere in the middle here. Again, this part is going to be a personal preference. Um, and then we need to trace our axe and we just kind of put that on our paper. We carefully trace the edges of our axe. And so I'm going to add um, like a little welt right here. And so I'm going to have uh, an extra piece of leather glued in here. But we also need to factor in our seam allowance. And so um, I typically use a quarter of an inch and then I'll run my stitch uh, in between that. So at an eighth of an inch, I'll have a stitch line. So this part, you can take your time and use a ruler and mark out from your initial line a quarter of an inch and then connect your lines completely. Now, depending on the thickness of leather that you're using, you'll want to consider uh, adding a little bit more leather um, down on the heel end of the bit. Um, and it's also going to be determined on how thick your bit is because as the leather uh, folds over, you're gonna lose a little bit of material as it folds over the top of the ax. So you'll, you'll wanna add a little bit and then once you cut out your leather, you can try it out. And if you need to trim it afterwards, um, then you can trim it to the perfect fit that you're looking for. So we trace our, our ax exactly. We add a seam allowance. And then we just fold the pattern and fold it as carefully as you like. And then cut around your outside line. And when you are done with that, you'll have a pattern that looks like that, and that's ready to cut out of leather. Now, I have my piece already cut, and to kind of show you how this uh, all gets assembled, let's kind of roughly put it in there for you. Here's my little welt piece, and that goes in front of the bit, and this uh, welt uh, helps to kind of level out the, th the, the thickness uh, of the sheath, but more importantly, having a, an additional piece of leather here is going to protect your stitches longer, especially if you're like me um, and you keep your axe uh, nice and scary sharp. Uh, the other thing that I like to do uh, sometimes is to add, so we have this welt here. And on the bottom, you can see I added a little bit of a lip that will get stitched towards the bottom of the sheath. And all that does is allow me to kind of uh, lock in the heel of the bit um, and kind of secure it in place. You'll see uh, a lot of axe sheaths will just leave the bottom open. Um, and that's fine. That's personal preference. I've made them like that before. And um, it's mostly fine because when you have a strap here, it's going to pull the sheath down onto the bit. Um, so it, that system works fine, but I like to, to sometimes just add a little bit more uh, just to kind of lock the sheath into place. Now, one thing that's going to be important is if you're having a front removed sheath, then the depending on the axe, but most of the time you can't run this stitch line all the way back. And the, the big reason is, as you can see here, um, this is kind of a, a mild example, but on some axe patterns, it can be rather extreme. Um, the bit is considerably wider than the rest of the axe. So back here uh, at, the, at the pole, it's nice and narrow and you have this big taper. So if you stitch all the way back, um, the bit won't fit into your sheath. So if you do stitch a little bit, uh, you're limited uh, by, by the extent of that taper. So make sure you factor that into place. So now all we have to do 
is uh, get out some contact cement and glue this piece together. Before we get much further, uh, let's go ahead and talk about cement. Uh, when it comes to working with leather, um, buy the good stuff. Buy your leather cement from a leather supply shop. Um, it's intended for that purpose, it's durable, um, it works fantastic, and you'll be much more happy with the results. Um, I, I get most of my stuff from Tandy because I have a store nearby, um, but there are other uh, different brands that are equally as good. But make sure uh, you get a good leather cement. So before we get going, um, I like to give myself um, some uh, a, sort of like a baseline to work from. So I'll put my little strip of leather in here. And so I don't make a giant glue mess. I'll trace the edges of this piece of leather. So now I have a line and then what I'll do is I'll just take my glue, clean off my brush. If you haven't used this stuff before, make sure you use it in a well ventilated area. It's got quite a bit of fumage to it. And then I will glue inside that marked line. And we're going to stitch this. So this is this is mostly to hold all of our pieces together so they don't move when we glue or when we stitch everything back together. Okay. So that part has glue applied. And I have it going that way. So I need to glue this side of the piece. Okay, now here's the important part. You need to have patience. When you work with leather cement, or, or mo most cements at, for that fact, um, you need to just leave this alone. Um, it's gonna be really tempting to wanna just dive in, slap everything together, um, but you actually need to let this cement tack up. Um, so it almost sticks to your finger. So I just have a little bit, um, but you all, you practically almost want this stuff dry. Um, and so sometimes, depending on the big, the size of the piece and the type of the leather, it could just take a minute or two. Um, sometimes it might be five or so minutes, uh, but you wanna make sure that it, it, it has that nice, uh, dry, can, almost dry consistency, almost like, um, like tape. And that's how you know you're going to be ready to adhere your pieces. You don't, you don't wanna glue your stuff together uh, when it's uh, all wet and slippery. So let it dry for a, for a moment, and then we can attach that piece to that piece. So my glue dried and I attached my pieces. And because it's cement, once those two pieces touch, it's all over. They are stuck for good. Now it's time to glue the other side. So it's the same process. Apply the glue. Make sure you have nice thorough coverage. And then we'll come around to the other side. This leather is really soaking it up, so I'll go back and put just a little bit more on here. And then I will let this tack up for a moment. And then when it's tacky, I'll go ahead and carefully fold it together. Um, if you're new, if you're new to leather cement, one like I like I said before, once this stuff touches, it's stuck for good. So you really take your time, line everything up, because once it goes down, Odds are you're gonna have um, a very difficult time trying to separate the two pieces again. Thank you. 
I'm just giving it some light hammering to help secure the uh, glue, but also um, remove any air bubbles. It doesn't have to be hard. You're just kind of a, a applying some pressure. And just like that, we have most of our sheath already done. Um, you can uh, clean up your edges uh, now, or you can wait till you're done stitching. It's kind of up to you, because uh, if it's a little bit off, that's fine. We can just dress it up. Um, if you have uh, a belt sander, that can be really handy in uh, cleaning this up real nice. But if you just have like a, a block of wood and some sandpaper, um, or if you have a very steady hand with a, uh, a nice box knife or something, then you can get a nice clean, crisp edge after your glue up. We have our sheath all glued together and we have our edges all dressed, uh, all cleaned up nice and flush. So we can set that aside for a moment. Um, but before we move on, since we're still in the leather cutting phase of things, uh, you'll need to cut a strap uh, to go around your axe. And the size of the strap is going to be dependent upon the buckle that you choose. So this is a 3 8 inch buckle I got at Tandy. And I like this style because the strap, the excess strap will, will go through and stay in place on the opposite side. Um, if you use a different type of strap, you'll, you would have to make a loop um, behind your, your strap bracket. Now, uh, you'll want to cut extra, so to figure out how much you think you'll need. You will need your axe and just your regular sewing tape measure. Um, if you don't have one of these, then you, just, uh, you can just use a length of string and cut it to length. So... Um, I figured this this came out about nine eight nine inches uh, so I went ahead and just cut it longer because we'll need a little bit more to secure our buckle into place we'll need a little strap to hold this down so go ahead and cut it longer you can just use a straight edge and a box knife uh, but if you are, if you already have one, or you're looking at uh, building your leather toolkit, and you plan on cutting more straps for uh, belts or rifle slings, then getting a strap cutter is very handy. Um, you don't use it all the time unless you do this sort of thing. Uh, but when you do need to use it, it is so fast. You just cut a straight edge on your hide, and then butt this up to the size that you want, and then just rip it down, and it just take seconds to get the perfectly sized strap that you need. But a straight edge and a box knife will work just fine. So that's the last bit of leather that you'll need to cut. So now we need to start talking about stitching and some tools. Um, a pair of dividers are just an essential part of a leather toolkit uh, because you can use these dividers to set your distance for your your stitching so you could just use this and scratch your line all around your piece that works nice and simple it's it's pretty affordable um the other thing that i prefer to use is a stitching groover and it has a little cutting edge and it has a fence on it that rides on the outside and what this little thing does is it cuts a small groove in the leather so that your stitches will sit below the surface and protect the stitching even more. Nice little handy uh, tool to have. Uh, this one is a little more expensive than that one, I believe. Then we'll need a way of punching holes. Um, you can use just an awl if that's all you have. Um, but if you're going to be doing more than one project, um, it's definitely worth uh, the money to buy a nice uh, stitching chisel set. This is a, a multi-width, multi-size kit um, that just goes on to its 
um, little handle. Um, I love it. It works great. These are nice razor sharp and it, it gives you great results uh, every time. So if you're going to be doing a lot, this might be something um, to consider investing in. It's what I'll be using for my stitching. So first I need to put in my stitching groove and I just need to make sure it's where I want it to be. Go in a little bit. That looks about right. And then with these, you just gotta make sure you have them nice and tight so they don't move on you. And then you just carefully apply pressure. And just take your time and you can hopefully see, well, probably not. Well, you'll get this little curl coming out as you make your groove. So now we have our groove and our stitching line. You can use things like these to um, for, for decoration on, on pieces too. You can get really fancy with how you use it. Um, I don't get too fancy with axe sheaths because it's a utility piece and um, it's, it's gonna have a pretty hard life. Um, so I don't get too ornamental with these, but certainly if you have a, a prized axe or something that you really uh, uh, enjoy, or maybe you want this to be a, a nice skill builder challenge, you can get all kinds of super fancy on that as well. So for, for me, this is good enough. And now it's time to punch some holes. Um, now you'll see you have long ones, which are great for, uh, so you, you can see right here, you're di you have your different stitch widths um, so you can choose your width um, these wide ones are great if you're doing long straight sections if you're doing tight turns or curves uh, going down to the, the the single point or even a double point um, will help you um, contour your stitching uh, really well so we just gotta make a choice I think I'll do like a medium length stitch so I'll take out those pieces and I might need this one. Now they sell uh, raw hide hammers. Um, so you don't do this to your tools. So you don't mushroom the ends. Um, I, I use, I just use a metal hammer, uh, but there are uh, other soft blow hammers and uh, sort of like vinyl hammers that you could, well, probably should use. Um, but I just use my metal hammer. And so all I do is stick it into my groove. Okay, right there. And you want to make sure it stays nice and vertical. And I'm not going to do this all on camera because it's going to be really loud. But you want to go through. And you can see it comes through the other side. Now, if you're doing really thick stuff and maybe it doesn't come through, going back to a single point uh, will help uh, open up that hole a little bit more. So now I just have to follow my groove all the way around and then we'll get to stitching. Now we are ready to stitch. So I have my piece in a stitching pony. Um, you don't need one of these, but if you get into leather working, something like this is probably going to be worth your time investing in. Um, these things can be ridiculously expensive for as simple as they are. Uh, so I, I made this one for a couple of bucks out of wood and some fasteners that I already had in my shop. Um, but what's nice is this keeps your, um, work handy so you can focus on your stitching. So it's nice to keep, uh, uh, an all handy in case you got to, uh, clean out some holes as you go. 
So keep that handy. And then you'll need some thread. There's all sorts of choices when it comes to thread. Uh, I typically just use uh, wax linen thread that I already have um, in stock. And um, you can buy specialty leather needles. But uh, since I do so much sewing, I usually just grab my box of tapestry needles and use those and they work just fine. Um, for stitching in leather, you essentially want a, a blunt tip needle. Uh, you don't want like the, the sharp glover's needles uh, that can uh, tear or uh, damage your, your sewing. So uh, you can see I have two needles. We're going to saddle stitch this. So I have one piece of string and I have a needle on each end. Um, and so all I do is I go through one side, pull it through, make sure my ends are equal. And then I go to my next hole, come through there. Now to show you, so I come through this way and in that same hole, I'm going to come back through that same hole going the opposite way, just like that. I'm going to do that all the way to the end. And that's how you do a saddle stitch. So I'm through on that side and I go back this way. Okay. And then you always want to make sure you pull nice and tight. And then go into your next hole, pull. Come to the other side and you got it. Our stitching is all nice and complete. Uh, when you get to the end, you just go back a couple of stitches and put a nice double knot in there and call it good. So we're already set this aside for a minute or two. And we need to address our buckle. Um, so I'm using this type. You can see the side that the bar goes on is slightly wider than the side that the strap goes on. And so in order to secure this, we need to put it in a piece of leather. Now this is one of those situations you can use uh, lighter leather if you want. Um, but I'm just all using the, the same size and all you need to do is cut off a piece of your strap that you cut earlier and you can cut it a little long it doesn't have to be perfect now and you need to cut um, a portion out of the middle so that way the bar can work freely inside the strap here So you can see when it's all assembled, you can wiggle it back and forth. So, and you can just do that with, with an X-Acto knife. It doesn't have to be anything too fancy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a couple of reference marks here. And I am just going to take a dab of glue and glue these pieces together real quick. Um, I'm not going to stitch these to the sheath. I'm just going to use a copper rivet. Um, but this uh, helps keep these little guys from uh, wiggling and getting out of alignment on the next step. So I'm going to wait for this to dry for a minute and then get it pinched. And then we'll start figuring out where we want to put our straps. With the buckle glued together and secure, now it's time for us to figure out our rivet situation. So copper rivets like these would be appropriate for the time period. And there are two pieces. You have your rivet and a washer. And then you need a rivet setting tool, which you can also pick up at any leather store or the same time you're buying it. And we need to figure out where we want to place it. So sometimes for me, it's just kind of personal preference. I'll just kind of eyeball where I want my rivet to go. And then I use my punch and I punch a hole. And I want to make sure that I use the right size uh, punch. So I have a nice 
snug fit on that rivet. So, um, because this is going to be a, a, a fastening connection, so you don't want it sloppy. Um, so it's always good, you know, just um, take a test hole and fit it before you commit to your final piece. So now we have sort of a, an artistic decision to make is where do I want that buckle to sit? So I kind of want to have it angled so it's kind of going back here. So that'd be nice in alignment. Maybe I don't want the buckle to be clinging on the bit. So yeah, maybe you're right about there. So what I'll do is I'll hold it and I'll mark the spot with my pencil. Now what I'll do is I'll punch through both sides of the leather. So then that way, um, the strap and the buckle will line up on either side for a nice uh, alignment. Let me go ahead and punch this out. With our hole punched, we are ready to start setting some rivets. So I'm going to start with the buckle. I'm going to come up from the inside like that. And then I'm going to stick my little anvil inside just like that and then I need to take my buckle slide that on kind of set it at the angle that I like kind of double check I'll be able to move it afterwards but I just want to get it close the first time then I have my setting tool. So you have two holes on here. One is really deep and then one just rounds the, the rivet head when you're done riveting or, or painting it. So I'll grab my hammer and then and that, that sets, okay? So this is obviously too long, so we have to trim it. Let me trim it. This is soft. I don't want to grab. Maybe something smaller might work. This is there we go. So you don't need a whole lot of meat left on that rivet. So I still have my little anvil in there. I'm going to change hammers to a ball peen. Just like that. And I'm just going to take my time and peen this rivet over. For the sake of speed and efficiency, I went ahead and uh, went down to my shop and uh, hammered these down on my anvil. They're all nice and rounded. So I have went ahead and put my strap on too. Went on the same sort of way. And now we almost have a completely functional period correct style axe sheath. Now we have to size our strap and punch some holes into it. So the however long the, the tag end you put on it is entirely up to you. Um, let's try that for now. And I'm kind of figuring out my first hole. It's all kind of, mm, that looks about good. And so I'll go ahead and poke a hole. Make a mark right there. And then I'll put maybe three or four more holes after that um, to factor in any, any stretching as I oil this when I'm done 
making it. So let me get to punching. We are now on our home stretch, having made a fully functional axe sheath. There we go. Now that is ready to use. Uh, a little bit of oil on it and it is good to go. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're just going to get a little bit fancy. So I'll introduce two new tools to this project. Set that aside. Now we are going to burnish these ends. As you can see, they're rough and fuzzy. And uh, so before you get started on, the, on this next part, you really want to make sure that these are as flat and even and sanded as possible. Um, otherwise, the next step isn't going to make that much of a difference. So uh, I have here a, a beveler. I don't even know what size it is. It's a small one. It says, it has a number three on it. And so what I'll do is I'll take this tool and then I'll run and it'll cut a bevel along all of my edges. This, um, just doing this just adds that extra level of professional finish to your products. So I go backwards this way. Now you can, uh, they, they make bevelers in all sorts of different sizes, depending on the, the size and type of project that you're doing. But you can, you can bevel and finish all the edges on this entire project if you wanted to. But like I said, you know, for me, it's a utilitarian project and I don't get particularly fancy on those. So we have our edges all nicely beveled and time to put that away. And we are going to use our slick or our burnishing tool. Um, they sell these at leather, leather supply stores. Um, you could buy them. You can make them. Um, you, you could find items around your house that will serve the same purpose. The whole idea is when we wet our edges, and we just have to dampen them. This does not have to be sopping wet. I just have a, a damp paper towel. And I'm going to dampen the edges that I plan on burnishing. Okay, and normally you'll want to like have this on a nice flat edge, but since I'm going to show you how to do it, I'll just do it in my hand. Now, um, the trick for this is you find a section of your tool that will fit uh, the piece that you're trying to burnish, and it's not about pressure. It's about speed and friction, so don't bear down on this because otherwise you're going to get like this weird like mushroomed edge, so it's, it's just about going quickly and you can already start to see the difference so you have that raw leather here and you can start to see the shine coming through and you know if it if it dries up too quick just just add a little bit more you don't want this soaking and then you just burnish until it's the appearance that you want it to be. And there you have it, our finished project. A nice period correct style axe sheath to keep our axe and us safe at events. Uh, I hope this uh, video has been enjoyable and informative. Um, let us know if you have any questions and as always, thank you for your wonderful positive comments. Um, thanks for liking and subscribing, and if you think anyone can benefit from this video, please feel free to share it up. Um, yeah, this is this is just an entry-level project. We didn't get too fancy in it. Um, this could really be a blank canvas for you to express all sorts of creativity and explore leather working on your own. Uh, but this nice little base model will get you quite a long ways and definitely improve... Um, your camp tool impression. 
Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.